Well, Oklahoma, this must seem familiar. The Big 12 championship, your fourth in five years. Favored to defeat an allegedly overmatched opponent once again. If you know better than anyone the hard realities of letting an underdog sneak up and bite you in the heart when it counts, for you, tonight is all about redemption. Touchdown, UConn! And what about you, UConn? Sure, you earned a share of the Big East title, finished with five straight wins, and fought through a personal adversity few will ever know. It's time for you to prove the critics wrong and validate your right to even step out of this field. This is no fiesta of second chances, no bowl of mercy. This is your last game of the year. Your last chance for redemption, for validation, for pride. From the beautiful University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, just outside Phoenix, it's the 40th Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. The Connecticut Huskies against the seventh-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. And here comes Connecticut. The University of Connecticut has been playing intercollegiate football since 1896. Tonight, the biggest game in school history, their first BCS Bowl game. UConn, the champions of the Big East at eight and four overall, five and two in Big East play. They shared the Big East regular season title with West Virginia and Pitt and won the conference tiebreaker to be the BCS Bowl representative led by the great running back number 23, Jordan Todman. The Big East Offensive Player of the Year and one of the best running backs in the country. Coached by Randy Edsel, who's done a remarkable job. When he got there 12 years ago, they were a 1AA team. And getting ready to face one of the all-time powers in college football history. Sooner Schooner and Oklahoma. The Sooners making their way onto the field. 11 and 2 overall. Champions of the Big 12 Conference for the seventh time in the last 12 years under head coach Bob Stoops. Welcome everyone to ESPN's presentation of the 2011 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl from University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. The first meeting ever in football between the Connecticut Huskies and the Oklahoma Sooners. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Matt Millen. Delighted to have you with us, and Happy New Year. We'll be joined by Heather Cox in just a moment. The Oklahoma Sooners appearing in their eighth BCS Bowl game in the last 13 years, and Matt, understandably so, they are the big favorite tonight. In fact, in the 13-year history of the BCS, they're the biggest favorite in any BCS game ever, 16 and a half points. You can understand why they're loaded with talent on offense. Oh, they really are, and it really it starts with a triumvirate offensively, led by their quarterback Landry Jones. Landry Jones is the first of the three. Oh, he has some help. Ryan Broyles, 118 receptions, but Jones right here. This guy, fast release, gets rid of it quick, hard to get to, very accurate. He's not afraid to throw the ball around the field. And when he does, Ryan Boyles, 118 receptions this year. He's in the slot. He's their big playmaker. And oh, by the way, they have a running game. Over 1,100 yards rushing by DeMarco Murray and 69 catches. That, my friend, is good balance. And they come in here off the win over Nebraska in the Big 12 title game. Meanwhile, Connecticut at midseason looked like it was heading nowhere. They were 3 and 4 overall, 0 and 2 in the Big East, but they turned their season around, finished with a five game winning streak to make their first BCS Bowl game ever. They've only been a full BCS team since 2002 when they went to 85 scholarships. They are the big underdog tonight. What's it going to take for them to have a chance to win? Well, that's a great question. In fact, there, there's a reason and there's a recipe for them to win. First of all, they have to start fast. And they also need something good to happen early, a turnover or a punt return or, or something like that. And then here's the most important part. They've got to be physical. This is going to be a punch you in the mouth type of game for UConn. If they can do that, it's going to start in their running game. And that's where Jordan Todman comes in. 
They are not afraid to run Todman early and often. They'll give it to him on first and second. If it's third and short, you'll see a steady diet of him. Last but not least, Zach Frazier, their quarterback, he's going to have to play the best game he's played all season. He cannot turn it over. He can't be the reason that they lose. When he has opportunities, he's got to make them. Bob Stoops. Oklahoma won the toss and deferred. Of course, when Bob first got to Oklahoma, he earned the reputation, the nickname Big Game Bob, won a national championship in his second year. But the track record has not been good in recent BCS bowl games. They've lost their last five, including two memorable defeats to Boise State and West Virginia here at the Fiesta Bowl. So he and his team determined to change that recent history around tonight. It'll be Patrick O'Hara with a big leg to kick off. And one of the strengths of Connecticut is their kickoff return team. Nick Williams has returned two kickoffs for touchdowns this year. And he'll get a chance from the two yard line. Williams and good coverage by Oklahoma as he was stopped just beyond the 20 yard line by Sam Proctor. They'll mark it at the 21. So Connecticut. Begins on offense. Led by senior Zach Frazier. Like his team, he had an up and down year. He was the starting quarterback for the first four games of the year. They went two and two against a pretty easy schedule. He was yanked at halftime of the fourth game of the season, replaced by Cody Endress. But then Endress was kicked off the team. Michael Box, a redshirt freshman, started against Louisville. But he suffered a concussion. Frazier got a chance to go back in and led them to five straight wins to get them here. Hands it off to Jordan Todman, the Big East Offensive Player of the Year, averaging 143 yards rushing per game, and he's ahead to the 24 for a gain of three. Todman's a junior from North Dartmouth, Massachusetts. A lot of speculation that this could be his last game. At Connecticut, that perhaps he'll enter the NFL draft. And he seemed to indicate that to us when he spoke to us the other day. Here's Robbie Fry. Speedy back up to Todman. Took it around the corner and came up a yard short of the first down. It's a Connecticut offense, only 96th in the country in total offense. Anthony Sherman, a terrific blocking fullback. Smith and Moore, the wide receivers, and Griffin. Is a solid tight end up front a very good offensive line Mike Ryan and Zach Hurd first team all Big East this year and the center Mo Petras second team all Big East that part of the group that wants to make it a physical game direct snap to Jordan Todman and if he got it it was just barely it looked like he made it to the yellow line according to the official on the far side of the field but as you see the official on the near side is marking it short of the yellow line. Oh, this is a direct snap, and if they're going to have any success, that looks like a pretty. I don't know about that spot there. Yeah, well, as he said, there seemed to be a great disparity between where the two officials yeah. were going to mark the ball. The one official from the far side walked in right along that yellow line. The official on the near side marked it well short of the line. So here's Cole Wagner to punt. On fourth and less than a yard. Ryan Broyles stopped immediately. 41 yard punt, no return. Anthony Sherman made the tackle. Here's Landry Jones. You know it's a pretty tough league when 4,289 passing yards is good for just second team. And that was the media second team, all Big 12. The coaches had an honorable mention behind Brandon Whedon of Oklahoma State. And Robert Griffin the third of Baylor. Jones a sophomore from Artesia New Mexico. 330 yards per game passing. And he's on target to Cameron Kenny. Who has an 11 yard gain on the first play from scrimmage for Oklahoma. He's come on the last couple of ball games with six catches in each of the last two for Oklahoma. DeMarco Murray can do it all. Royals 118 catches. 
There's the offensive line. You have to be Evelyn Wood because of the pace at which Oklahoma plays. You're going to read all those names. They get right up over the line and snap it quickly. Kenny, another catch. Lawrence Wilson drove him back. And that's an important part, Sean. If when you play Oklahoma, not only are you defending the team in front of you, you're defending the pace of the game. And that's something that they're going to have to get used to. Not only the players, but the coaching getting the calls in. Good job by Landry Jones handling a knee high snap. He gave it to DeMarco Murray, who's rushed for over 1,100 yards this season. And he has a first down. At the Connecticut 48, Juan Martin, the defensive tackle, made the stop. There's Josh Heupel, who is calling the plays for the first time tonight. Jones on target to Ryan Broyles, who has another first down. Near the Yukon 34-yard line. Heupel was the quarterback coach since 2005. Kevin Wilson, who was the offensive coordinator, took the head coaching job at Indiana in early December. So Heupel... And Jay Norvell are the co-offensive coordinators, but Heupel is calling the plays. Some wondered if they'd be able to play at that same pace and get into an early rhythm as Heupel tries to find his legs. Here's DeMarco Murray through a big hole. Another first down. 11 yards. Jerome Jr., the safety, made the tackle for Connecticut. Well, you're going to watch Ted Jennings, number 98, just gets up the field way too wide. He has to be able to squeeze that and force an edge and he didn't do that Murray took advantage of him. quick swing pass again to Ryan Broyles he lowers his head He's not a real big guy they list him at 511 he told us the other day he's 187 pounds but he is very strong and you saw his strength there as he finished the run after the catch and got down near the 11 yard line Broyles is the guy who makes this offense go and we we can talk about DeMarco Murray inside and stills on the outside and but this guy, he's the chain mover. Randy Edsel said it was important for the underdog Huskies to get off to a good start. They're on their heels right now against this Oklahoma team. Fourth in the nation in passing offense. Murray smothered for a loss. Ted Jennings in on the play. Sophomore out of Dayton, Ohio. Sean, if they're going to, they're going to, they have to be physical up front. But it's more than just coming off the ball and being physical in the offensive line. They're going to have to challenge these receivers. If they let these receivers run clean, they can't run with them. Boyles is faster, Stills is faster. They got to get up there and get their hands on people. Second and 12, they can get another first down just inside the two yard line. Huskies crowding the line of scrimmage, put pressure on Jones, who's on target to the eight yard line. To Kenny Stills, the true freshman. That's his 54th catch of the year. That's the record for receptions by an Oklahoma freshman. And that is a stud in the making. Kenny Stills has big time speed and he's sudden right off the ball. Jones five for five on this opening drive. Oklahoma trying to deliver an early message. But they are not going to take this decided underdog Connecticut team lightly. Jones on the rollout has a receiver has a touchdown. James Hanna, the tight end, an eight yard score. Good call. Well executed. Again, they're just using their speed. If they don't disrupt the receivers and they let them run free, that'll be ugly. Seventy yards in nine plays in under three minutes. Jimmy Stevens adds the extra point. Landry Jones six for six on the opening drive for 56 yards and a touchdown. Caught by James Hanna, his 18th catch of the year, and seven of them have gone for touchdowns. Nine plays, 70 yards against the UConn defense that gives up less than 20 points per game and is 23rd in the country in scoring defense. You know, Sean, we talked about it. Just if you give those receivers that much room, they they're going to eat they're going to eat them up. You have to disrupt the timing somehow because Landry Jones gets rid of the ball too fast. Patrick O'Hara down to the goal line and Nick Williams. 
Better return this time out to the 27 yard line. And this Oklahoma defense that features Jeremy Beal up front, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year selected by the coaches. Austin Box has returned from injury to bolster a linebacking core. Lewis is the star of that group. And the cornerbacks have had a terrific season. Both of them first year starters, Fleming and Hurst. They were a question mark at the beginning of the year. They've been solid throughout. Third and 12, Frazier flushed, has his man as a first down. Oh, it's early, but that could be a big play to Ryan Griffin. Randy Edsel said we need to get off to a good start. We can't afford three and outs. They've already had a rough start, and they were on the verge of their second three and out if that play didn't happen. Well, they blitzed the, the protection, and Griffin does a nice job of coming back to the ball and is able to get that first down. And this is just power against power here in Oklahoma won that battle it seemed like all 22 players on the field were right around the ball and Jeremy <laughs> yeah. Beal tripped up Jordan Todman yeah let's just look at just how many look at this one two three four five six seven eight nine with a tenth back here and that's the tenth guy is only seven yards off the ball heck sometimes linebackers are seven yards off the ball three receivers for UConn. Frazier's short throw, short gain, and Michael Smith took a big hit as he was driven back. Tony Jefferson, Jamel Fleming in on the play. Quentin Carter delivered that big hit, the outstanding senior safety from Las Vegas. A nice job, and that's a nice hit. But what was even more impressive was that umpire was able to duck to get out of the way of that throw. Well, in this day and age, you have to be careful if you're Quentin Carter not to be leading with the top of that helmet. He was a first team All American this year, Carter the safety. Third down and eight. Frazier, plenty of time. Throws and a nice catch made on a high throw by Kashif Moore. And a first down for Connecticut at the 39 yard line of Oklahoma after an 11 yard reception by the junior from Burlington New Jersey. This is exactly what UConn needed Zach Frazier to be. He's on. He's on and this when he's on he's pretty good. He's got a big arm. Mechanics are his key. A lot of times he'll throw the locked front knee and his ball comes off high. David the Todman. Still struggling to find running room. He weaved his way for three before Jonathan Nelson made the tackle. Frazier was very highly recruited coming out of high school in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Started his college career, as a matter of fact, at Notre Dame. But he realized early on he was not going to get much of a chance to play. He was behind Jimmy Clausen. So he decided to transfer and came to Connecticut. One of his biggest wins of his career was at Notre Dame last year. Throw and catch to Griffin the tight end with another first down as Ryan made it to the 28 yard line. 11 yard gain Austin Box made the tackle for Oklahoma. Zach Frazier looks like he's back in the Pennsylvania Big 33 game. Because he is on. And he's seeing the field. And that time he read the blitz perfectly. And he was able to find him inside. Ryan on a nice throw right where it had to be. And that's exactly what the Husky team needed. They needed for Frazier to play his best. And this is what they wanted as well. A ball control drive. Frazier, they want a flag in the secondary, and they're not going to get it. It looked like bodies were tangled. The intended receiver was Ryan Griffin with Quentin Carter right there. Randy Etzel well out on the field asking, where's the flag? Oh, yeah, that's a, clearly a penalty. Yeah. You know, wow, how do you miss that? He hooked him and he had him, but he missed it. But what's it equally now they missed that, but I'll tell you what I haven't missed. The Yukon offensive line is giving great protection. And that's very good news for the Husky team. Jordan Todman fights his way down to the 23. You know, it's interesting when we spoke with Hank Hughes, the defensive coordinator for Connecticut yesterday, he said. We hope these officials are ex defensive backs yeah, exactly. and not ex quarterbacks because we want to be physical with the Oklahoma wide receivers. So maybe it'll work both ways when Hank Hughes' defense is out on the field. He hopes that they let his defenders do what Quentin Carter did. 
14th play of the drive for Connecticut. Third down and five. Again, that line does a great job giving protection, and Michael Smith did not appear to get the first down. And Randy Edsel will have a decision to make. Well, again, the official running in from the near side is very close to that yellow line. He's going for it again. On fourth and one, Robbie Fry gets stacked up. He did not get it. Austin Box. What a bunch of Sooner defenders. Ironically, it was the same play that we just watched in the flashback. It was Zach Hurd pulling around with Robbie Fry instead of Jordan Todman carrying the ball. Brent Venables, defensive coordinator, has to be pleased with the end of that drive, although Connecticut held the ball in March for a while. They come away with nothing as the fourth down attempt fails. Still 7-0 Oklahoma. Connecticut drove, but they got stopped on a fourth down in less than a yard. You're going to see Austin Box come over. Zach Hurd's going to pull around, but I want you to watch the safety drop down. That's Harris, 30 right there. Boom. He's the key. He made the first hit. He was the free hitter. He got his job done. Landry Jones was passed a little bit behind Cameron Kenny, who made another nice catch. And it's a first down and off go the Sooners again. Kenny, junior college transfer, last year had a problem with drop balls. He admitted he was nervous. He settled in now as a senior. He's really been a big factor lately. DeMarco Murray ahead for four. After the 12 yard completion, a four yard run by the fifth year senior. Murray is playing in his first BCS game due to injuries in years gone by. He hasn't been able to stay healthy to be on the field for their previous BCS bowl games during his time in Norman and what a year he's had not only running the football over, over 1100 yards but 69 receptions they're not afraid to throw it to him anywhere on the field under three minutes to go first quarter Murray spun around but spun forward it looks like he has the first down CO Moore made the tackle I was expecting now they come with it they come with the line stunt inside and, but I was expecting a lot more physical front out of these down four people for UConn Landry Jones nine for nine play action fake he's looking deep and has a man wide open Ryan Broyles inside the 20. Inside the 10 and leveled out of bounds by Lawrence Wilson at the six yard line. First and goal for Oklahoma. Well, they come out in a bunch package. That's three receivers to one side. Royals is on the outside. Now he's going to just come straight across the field. It's a long developing route, which means you have to have a lot of time. So good protection. And Jones is on target again. 39 yard gain. Now it's Moses Madu. The backup tonight to DeMarco Murray. They're playing without Roy Finch, who had been the backup in recent weeks, a true freshman who's out with a foot injury, suffered in practice between their last game and this game. So Madu, right. the senior carry. Yeah, right now, and there's Finch, and he was he is quick as a hiccup, that guy. But Madu's no slouch as well. And none of all of them will play well as long as their offensive line is playing the way they're playing right now. They're coming off the ball and they're winning the line of scrimmage. Pistol look here. They've gone to that more and more as the year's gone along. Murray bounced off the pile and into the end zone. Touchdown to Marco Murray. That, that time, UConn was able to hold it right here. That's well done. Okay, they take the initial thing away, but you have to hold your edge and you have to keep leverage. And they didn't do it. And Murray bounces it into the end zone. Two impressive drive for Oklahoma here in the first quarter, and Jimmy Stevens makes it 14 to nothing. That one was nine plays, 81 yards in three minutes and 20 seconds. Murray the touchdown. The 65th of his career, adding to his Oklahoma record. 
Well, they've had it twice. They've scored twice. Oklahoma's averaging eight and a half yards per snap. Nick Williams will return to Patrick O'Hara kickoff from the four. And that's three kickoffs well covered by Oklahoma. Been chilly here in Phoenix the last several days. Hasn't gotten above 50 degrees. Temperature down in the high 20s at night. And it's cool inside this building as well. The roof is closed for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Zach Frazier on first down in trouble and dumped. Ronnell Lewis brought him down back of the 16 yard line for a five yard loss. Actually where they're marking it, it looks more like a seven yard loss now and that'll be the last play of the first quarter. A quarter controlled by Oklahoma. Big plays on offense and defense at a 14 to nothing lead. Welcome back to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Connecticut and Oklahoma. Oklahoma started playing football back in 1895. Connecticut started in 1896, but for most of their history, they were a 1AA program, fully up to FBS football in 2002. They were in a transitional year in 2000 and 2001, got to the 85 scholarships in 02. And given that they're relative upstart, they've done very well, but certainly nowhere near the tradition and history of Oklahoma. Few schools could match what Oklahoma's done with seven national championships and five Heisman Trophy winners. Well, Randy Edsel, right there on your left, has done just a fantastic job with this program. And I think he's one of the really good coaches in all of college football. Now Bob Stoops, he's no, he's no slouch either. He's taken that program there and taking it to national championships and BCS games and he's been playing for national championships so and both these two very good coaches. Bob Stoops was 38 when he was hired he's 50 years old now. Both of these coaches look younger than their age and Edsel is 52. Jordan Todman Stop for no gain. Here's Heather Cox. Guys, they're playing on natural grass out here, and you'll notice it's already pretty chewed up. Oklahoma learned a valuable lesson in a bowl game in this stadium against West Virginia in that loss. They didn't test the surface. They had about 15 players changing their cleats after the first drive. So about three hours before today, Jay Norville was out here testing the grass, said it felt slippery and soft. It was ripping up. So he had them change from molded cleats to spiked screw-in cleats to get a little bit better leverage, better plants out here. Third down and 17. Frazier stepped up into the pocket and threw incomplete in the direction of Michael Smith. With Travis Lewis in coverage, junior linebacker out of San Antonio, their leading tackler on the year. And he's also good in coverage. He has eight career interceptions. That's the most of any linebacker in school history. Travis Lewis has had a good year all from the beginning of the season all the way through. Runs very well, pretty physical. Cole Wagner to punt, redshirt freshman from York, Pennsylvania. Line drive kick. Brian Broyles watches it bounce, decides to get away from it. It's down by Yukon near the 35 yard line. 49-yard punt. This offense for Oklahoma has been fun to watch. They've already run 18 plays from scrimmage. Have had the ball less than six and a half minutes. Trey Franks, the true freshman, took the handoff across the formation. Went for four to the 40-yard line. Well, they're trying to end that five-game BCS bowl losing streak. And they're off to a good start. Quick toss again to Franks the other way, and he's flattened by Lawrence Wilson, the leading tackler in the Big East for the second year in a row. Wilson, Wilson man. senior playing his last game. Yeah, and a nice tackle, but and Scott Lutris, the other senior, he missed the tackle, but he missed it the right way, made him turn back inside, and Wilson was able to finish the deal. Sets up this third down. And four, Landry Jones is 12 for 12 passing. Movement, but Connecticut got back. 
Jones dumps it over the middle, intercepted. Dwayne Grants has nothing but grass in front of him. Touchdown, Connecticut. Sean, they finally walked up on the receivers and disrupted the timing. And Gratz comes up with a big play and takes it back for six. That's what turned their season around for Connecticut. They had 17 takeaways in the last five games of the regular season, all of them wins. That's their 20th interception of the year in the fifth. But they've returned for a touchdown this season. Dave Taggart, the extra point. And just when it looked like Oklahoma might turn it into an early route, Randy Etzel got the big play he needed from his defense. 46 yard return by Dwayne Gratz, the sophomore from Piscataway, New Jersey. It's 14 to 7. The Connecticut fans fully engaged now. Dwayne Gratz, the interception and 46 yard return for a touchdown. Randy Etzel said the key to the five game winning streak to close the regular season aggressive defense and creating turnovers. They won the last regular season game against South Florida to get to the BCS Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on a pick six by Lawrence Wilson at South Florida in their regular season finale. No chance for Moses Madu to bring back Chad Christian's kickoff. Here's a catch by Broyles. And a big third down conversion for Oklahoma. Harris Agbor banged him out of bounds, but that's a 34 yard gain for the junior from Norman, Oklahoma. Ryan Broyles, his sixth catch, and he's already over 100 yards. Well, he's trying to take away the inside, and then he went for the ball. His eyes went back. Broyles is one of those guys, he just, you know, he's just a good football player. He's not real quick, he's not real fast. He just has a great combination. Receiver wide open, and Cameron Kenny lunged and couldn't get it. The throw a little bit too long from Landry Jones. The play action set it up, and that was six if they executed. Well, they missed him, and that's one they're going to want back. He's wide open. They're going to go back and watch his tape. He's just going to make himself sick as he just runs right by Grass. Gets to the middle of the field. There's nobody back there. That was six points. And the pistol look for Oklahoma. Jones with a blitz coming. A high throw and the catch by Stills. And he can fly. He fumbled and got it back. Harris Agbor knocked it out. And Stills was alert to get on it quickly and got a fortunate bounce as well. And Oklahoma has a first down at the 20-yard line on a 20-yard game. That's just awful by Bleedy Ray Wilson, number five, the corner. But a good job of getting the ball out by Agbor right there. He strips it. And Oklahoma's been great this year protecting the ball. They're plus 14 coming in in turnover margin, seventh best in the country. Another fake by Jones and a high throw over the head of Broyles. Matter of fact, these are two of the best teams in the country. Oklahoma came in at plus 14 in turnover margin, and Connecticut was plus 12. And we mentioned. Connecticut took off the last five games of the year. They were even for the season in turnover margin. Heading in the last five games of the year. Plus 12 in the last five. That'll get you a five game winning streak. DeMarco Murray taken down back at the 23 by Scott Lutris. And they brought him on a blitz off the edge. They had him walked out in the slot. And right before you see him starting to creep in the top of your screen. And then he just keeps on coming. He's unaccounted for. Makes the tackle. Officially a loss of four. Third and 14. Looked like Connecticut might have been offside. It's a screen to DeMarco Murray. I don't see a flag on the play, and Murray's down to the line of scrimmage. Good reaction by Twan Martin and Dwayne Gratz. Landry Jones asking Jay Strickers. I think he thought Connecticut was offside too. Well, there's one thing about possibly being offside, another thing about blocking the guy. That would help. Oh. 
Well, here comes Jimmy Stevens. Austin Woods, the snapper, John Nemo, the holder. Stevens has been accurate, but this would match his long 42 yarder. And that is accurate, and it is good. Officially a 41 yard field goal, one yard shy of his longest of the season for the junior from Oklahoma City. 9.57 to go in the first half, 17 7 sooner. Tom McDonough, Matt Mill, and Heather Cox, delighted to have you with us for Connecticut and Oklahoma. Patrick O'Hara will kick off. O'Hara was a soccer player in high school, never played football. Started kicking footballs as a hobby. Wound up trying out for the Oklahoma team. Walked on and made it. First game he was ever in was in college. Randy Edsel told Zach Frazier after he was yanked as the starter in game four of the year, you're going to be third string. Don't know if you'll play again, but stay ready. Zach Frazier said, I prayed every night I'd get another chance. He did, and he led them to five straight wins and into their first BCS Bowl game. Jordan Todman to the 42 for a gain of three. You know, when you watch uh, Oklahoma defense, you put the tape on, the guy who just jumps off is Quincy Carter. And here's a kid, he's a physical guy, a uh, Quentin Carter, rather, I'm sorry. Uh, and he he does, he's a physical guy, he's down in the box, he's got good range, he can get to all the points for the throws. This kid's gonna have, he'll be playing on Sunday afternoons. Terrific person as well, part of the Football Coaches Association, good works team for his work in the community. Screen to Todman. And he's down at the 46, tripped up by Travis Lewis. Third and nine. Frazier given time, and he's almost intercepted. Up to tell to whom that was intended, because it was right into the lap of Jonathan Nelson. Looked like he was trying to try to throw it to Nick Will, uh, Williams. It was well protected, but it wasn't even close. Tony Jefferson looked like he tipped it. Nelson went diving for it, didn't get it. Randy Edsel said that's been the big problem with their passing game. They're just not accurate enough, consistently enough. They really don't seem to have many playmakers at the wide receiver positions either. Here's Cole Wagner to punt. That's a good one. Ryan Broyles from the eight. He weaves his way out to the 26. 52 yard punt. 17 yard return. Andrew Jones on first and 10 has Ryan Broyles trying to find running room. Got away from Scott Lutris. And is tackled by Jesse Joseph near the first down marker. One of the things we talked about, Landry Jones, is hard to get to because of the quick release. Now he has good protection and he can see the whole field. And that ball comes out fast, which makes blitzing him even tougher. Second and one, DeMarco Murray has the first down to the 49 yard line. Lawrence Wilson made the tackle with help from Lutris. And you can tell Lutris is frustrated about having that cast on his right hand on the previous play. Couldn't make the tackle and he shook his right arm into the air. Murray breaks a couple of tackles and Lawrence Wilson will wrestle him to the ground with help. There's Josh Heupel. Just 32 years old. Quarterback who led them to a national championship in 2000. Bob Stoops second year and Josh was the runner up to Chris Winky for the Heisman Trophy. Cool. Already 24 pass attempts. Three minutes to go in the half. Attempt 25 on target to Kenny. Breaks a tackle. Spins inside. The 10 yard line. Trevardo Williams ran him down. First and goal Oklahoma. Well here's the watch the quick throw. Set up. Bang, ball comes out. Now he has liked this matchup all night long. Yes, there's a huge cushion. He's playing in off coverage. But he's eating. Kenny's eating that up out the outside. DeMarco Murray ran into Jesse Joseph. 
It'll be second and goal. No gain on the play. What we really haven't seen yet out of this Oklahoma offense is when they throw the ball to DeMarco Murray. He's got 70 catches himself for 69. He's a very good receiver out of the backfield. There are two losses both on the road of Missouri and Texas A&M. They had trouble in the red zone. Jones throws it away. And that's just poor by that guy standing there by the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. He had a chance to make a catch against the wall. Dropped it. That's just poor. That's just poor by him. He and had a chance. Another chance. I mean, the likelihood of him Look being the it. intended Look receiver again is very slim. Oh, he did. He came down with it. You want to take it back? I I'll take it back. To you him. look scared, but at least you made the catch. <laughs> from the eight-yard line, out of the timeout, Landry Jones looking for help from the sideline. Well, he's like Cameron Kenny here tonight, and he's got a matchup out there in the top, right up here. Three receivers to the left. Kenny was the only one to the right. Jones throws in that direction too high for Kenny with Dwayne Gratz in coverage. Oklahoma has outgained Connecticut by 207 yards, but right now it's just a 10 point lead and the field goal team comes on. Yeah, that's pretty well played by Gratz. He's playing off coverage. He took away the inside and forced him to go one way, and then he was able to get that inside hand in and disrupt the ball. Jimmy Stevens. It was a big part of their surge to the Big 12 South title. Made four field goals at Oklahoma State in the game they had to have. Low line drive, but it's good. And he's two for two tonight. It's 20 to 7. Oklahoma with 2.05 to go in the half. They didn't score an offensive touchdown in that win at South Florida. Had a defensive touchdown and three field goals. Nick Williams brings the kickoff back. As a whole, can he stay in bounds? He's taken down by the kicker, Patrick O'Hara, at the 43-yard line. 33-yard return by Williams, one of the best kickoff return men in the country. And he's fearless, and he's not afraid. He just runs right in to the middle of the coverage, but he does a nice job of avoiding everybody except the kicker. He's averaged 42 yards per kickoff return. That would lead the country, but he only has 11 returns. He's one shy of the minimum you need to be eligible. Well, UConn down by two scores, and Frazier's lucky that wasn't a pick six by Travis Lewis. Travis Lewis read it the whole way. He read it. He, he eyeballed the quarterback. Watch his eyes. He'll take his drop, and his eyes are back inside. Now, he sees it. <laughs> he saw it before anybody. Zach Frazier was eyeballing Griffin, the tight end, and Lewis eyeballed Frazier. Great play would have been a pick. Travis had a big interception in the Big 12 championship win against Nebraska. He recovered two fumbles in that game. Jordan Todman finally shakes loose and goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line, chased out by Jamel Fleming. Longest run of the night for Todman. 19 yards. Watch the feet inside. It's just a strong runner. And then once he's able to bounce it, he's smart enough to be able to get outside and stop the clock. He had 14 yards for the game prior to that 19 yard run. He's run for at least 80 in every game this year. Frazier zings one caught first down 25 yard line Isaiah Moore the junior from Cambridge Massachusetts come on Trey Hurst the tackle they'll go quickly they have all three timeouts left and again good protection right here they're on a little bit of roll falls right where it has to be inside hand off to Todman we got banged down after a one yard gain by Frank Alexander and Jeremy Beal. And the clock runs. Randy Etzel isn't going to use a timeout yet. Plenty of time. Three wide receivers. Sometimes they just spread you out to run it with Todman. Not here. Blitz. Frazier got it off for Michael Smith, who could not get away from Jamel Fleming. Gain to the 20-yard line. It'll bring up third down and five. 
I think one of the reasons Randy Edsel doesn't want to use a timeout, Matt, you don't want to leave any time on the clock exactly. for Oklahoma with as quickly as they can go up and down the field. He gets his first down, he'll use a timeout. They are in field goal range for Dave Taggart. They haven't been a great third down team this year. Another blitz. Frazier given time by the line, lofts it out, and it is too long for Kashif Moore. Well, Moore is able to get on top. He, was, he beat the safety and the corner. You're going to watch him number six in the top right there. Now he wins. He's on top. The safety can't get there. That's a throw you have to make. A tough throw, but he's got to make it. Thing they've got to make it. That was the situation facing Dave Taggart a couple of times this year. He kicked a 52 yarder in the regular season finale with 17 seconds to go against South Florida to win the game and get them to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. 37 yard try here. And it is good. His 51st career field goal adding to his UConn record. Junior from Northboro, Massachusetts. And here's Heather Cox with Bob Stoops. Coach, your team made a statement early. What was the key to your quick 14 0 start? Well, uh, execution. Guys uh, run and pass. We're executing well offensively. Defensively, we came up with some stops. Um, you know, but then, you know, you, you give up a big kickoff return and an interception for a touchdown, lets them hang around. What's the biggest puzzle you need to solve in the second half to get the win? Well, uh, just keep doing what we're doing. Uh, you know, keep executing and uh, play good run defense and offense, take care of the football. We'll let you get to your team. Thanks, Coach. Sean? All right, Heather, thank you. Halftime score the 2011 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Oklahoma 20 and Connecticut 10. Stay tuned for John and Jesse and the Chevrolet Halftime Report right after these messages. And welcome back to ESPN's presentation of the 2011 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl from Glendale, Arizona, University of Phoenix Stadium. Oklahoma and Connecticut doing battle in football for the first time and at the half, the Sooners have a 10-point lead. And we welcome you back, Sean McDonough, along with Matt Millen. The song asked, are you ready to go? Oklahoma was ready to go. They came out firing, storm to a 14-0 lead, and Landry Jones was very sharp. Landry Jones was the key, but not to be outdone. Their defense took away Jordan Todman. That was number one. But Landry Jones, he came out throwing. We talked about his quick release. He was well protected. He was able to feel and see the whole field, which he did. He did it. He did it early. He did it often. He scored on a variety of different ways. And then when he finally got pressure, he threw the pick to Gratz, which gave UConn their six points. But Landry Jones, only six incompletions in the first half and 233 yards. Randy Edsel's team will kick off. Their biggest challenge will be to see if they can get Jordan Todman going in the running game in the second half when they have the football. Chad Kristen will kick off. Trey Franks back deep along with Moses Madu and the second half is underway. Trey Franks the true freshman. Right up the middle ran into his own man. Stayed on his feet and got to the 23. Here's Heather Cox. Sean Randy Edsel told his team at halftime that defensively they've got to be more aggressive especially in the secondary they're being much too tentative offensively the things they need to work on run better the way they're going to do that pass the ball use more play action I also talked to coach Edsel about the emotion and the reaction when Kashif Moore put on Jasper Howard's jersey in the locker room he said it was emotional it was uplifting that emotion needs to carry over into the second half for the Huskies to pull off the upset. Landry Jones fires a little high and it was Dwayne Gratz who had a pick six earlier got a hand on it. And there's a look at the crowd. You know, there were a lot of conversations about neither one of the schools sold all of their 17,500 tickets but fans have found other places to go to get the tickets and sometimes they're cheaper when you go to some of these ticket agencies. Than they are if you go through the schools. DeMarco Murray stuffed. And this UConn defense here at the beginning of the second half, much more aggressive than it was in the first half. That time it was C.O. Moore, the sophomore from Apex, North Carolina. Yeah, C.O. Moore, number 46 on the inside. And then Scott Lutris also is right in the middle of that thing as well.
And they force a three and out. Under duress, Jones has his man, Broyles, first down and much more. Still fighting all the way to the 41 yard line. 20 yard gain and a big play as we look at it from our direct TV ultimate picture cam. Well, they brought pressure and they got pressure. And then as La as uh, Jones rolls to his right, the guy who falls down and, and beats him is Gary Wilburn. And 21. now they have Kenny wide open. Cameron Kenny, touchdown Oklahoma. That didn't take long. He gets on top of the safety, Akbar, number 25. Stayed in bounds the whole way. Nicely done. He's had a nice night the whole night, Sean. They've gone, they've gone to him often, and he's responded. Yeah, they really seem to catch UConn off balance with a very quick snap after the 20-yard gain to Broyles. 59 yards to Kenny. Jimmy Stevens the extra point. Well, it looked like it might be a three and out. Instead, it's a four play, 80 yard touchdown drive. Cameron Kenny, the senior, having a big night for the Sooners, who have their largest lead of this Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Back at University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, Oklahoma has taken a 17 point lead. On a 59 yard touchdown pass from Landry Jones to Cameron Kenny. It's the third longest pass play in Oklahoma bowl game history. And Tress Way will kick off. Bouncing to Nick Williams. Try to get to the sideline and was run down. Aaron Colvin and Corey Nelson in on the tackle. Kashif Moore, good run after the catch. Finally shoved out by Quentin Carter, but Moore across midfield to the 49 yard line of Oklahoma. A 28 yard catch and run. Sean, you made the point earlier, and I want to repeat it. This, this receiving core doesn't have a lot of speed except for one guy, and that's number six, Kashif Moore. Ooh, looks like he stepped out of bounds there. They snap it quickly. And no gain on the play for Jordan Todman, who was wrapped up by Jeremy Beal. Senior who's had a tremendous career at Oklahoma. 43rd career start. He's on his way to the NFL. And not a real big guy, not a real fast guy. Just fundamentally sound all the time. Very strong at the point. He looks to me like he'll be an outside linebacker at the next level in a 34 scheme. Bob Stoops saying he's incredibly smart. Second and ten for Zach Frazier. And it's intercepted off the hands of his receiver. Jamel Fleming's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Oklahoma. You talk about this receiving core for Connecticut the reality is they're just not very good to compete at this level Michael Smith has the ball go off his hands see you later well if all state won the sponsor two of them they could have a bad hands and a good hands play all in one as he hit him in a bad spot right in the hands for Smith and then he just takes it back for six all the way Jamel Fleming right where he needs to be. Well, each team's returned an interception for a touchdown. Fleming took that one, 55 yards. Jimmy Stevens, the extra point, is the fifth interception of the season for the junior from Arlington, Texas. Jamel Fleming has had an excellent year as a first year starter for the Sooners. The trophy was created back in 1986. Not easy to hoist. It weighs about 45 pounds. That crystal football itself is about eight pounds. I always worry about that football falling and breaking. Well, that's a good place to put it right now. 
right next to the field. Yes, yeah, somebody can run it over. <laughs> Tress Way kicks off again. Two touchdowns in a minute and 11 seconds for Oklahoma. Robbie Fry. He has speed. Robbie Fry breaks free. Only one man has a chance, and they will not catch him. 95 yards. Touchdown, Connecticut. Well, the former Lehigh Indian used all that Lehigh Valley Conference speed. Nobody caught him. That guy can run. He's a straight line speed guy, and he showed every ounce of it there. We mentioned one of the strengths of this Connecticut team. Kickoff returns. Williams has returned two for scores this year. Now Fry has brought one back. He had a key kickoff return at the very end of that South Florida game in the regular season finale to set up the game winning field goal by Dave Tegger to just kick the extra point. Well, this is typical of UConn. They will scratch and claw in every way all the way to the end. Here's a look at it from our DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. All right, just a nice move on Rondell Lewis to the inside, and then he just got on that left sideline and just used his speed. And you can see he's just dis distancing himself from everybody. Run through a couple tackles. Now he's 210 pounds, has very good speed. And then after he picked up his blocks and was able to get to that left sideline, it was gone. And that's been a season long problem and frustrating for Bob Stoops. That's four kickoff returns allowed by Oklahoma touchdowns this year, nine in the last three years. And you remember one of those, Matt, they were the number one team in the country. They went to Missouri. John McGaffey of Missouri returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown. That really set the tone for that game and wound up being Oklahoma's first loss. It really did set the tone, Sean. And then. And then it was a really nicely played game by the Missouri Tigers, but the whole thing is set up by the special team. Randy Edsel and his staff do a great job of special teams, and I know Bob Stoops has been very disappointed with his. Chad Kristen kicks off down to the goal line to Trey Franks. And he is chopped down shy of the 20. Good coverage by Martin Hippolyte. To get back within 17 and a long way to go. 9.24 remaining. Out of the pistol. Jones gave it to DeMarco Murray. Taken down by Scott Lutris, who's battling admirably with really only one arm with which to tackle tonight. I think Scott Lutris has had himself a pretty good game here tonight. Pretty active game. They pull him out, uh, they pull him out on, on the third downs, but I'll tell you, it's not easy to be tackling people with one hand in a club. You would have liked to have been clubbing people out there on a regular basis. There's DeMarco Murray the other way. Stopped just short of the first down by Bleedy Ray Wilson. And of course, you did uh, tackle a few people in the Fiesta Bowl way back in 1977. Our very own Matt Millen was the defensive most valuable player of Penn State's Fiesta Bowl win over Arizona State, coached by Frank Cush. And of course, your Who's coach that guy? is still the coach Who's that of Penn guy State. Right there? Joe Paterno. That's a long time ago. This ball game's come a long way since then. Kind of a newbie back then, and now it's a stalwart. And Murray stopped short of the first down. He's not on down third all the way. And one, UConn holds. Jerome Jr. made the play. You know, he was on top. Jerome Jr. came up and drilled him, but he landed on top of Jerome Jr. And he could have, it, it appeared that his knees weren't down. He could have gotten up. Watch the hit. Put head to head. Now he's not down, not down, still not down. He's on top of him. He could have gotten up instead. He used him as a chair. Hand is still fine. That's a good, good play by Junior, though. He worked through the block, made the read really well, and came up and made the hit. Tressway punts. This is a good one. Nick Williams muffed it. And it's still loose, and Connecticut has it back at the 29-yard line. A lot of fighting going on for that ball, boy.
Tobbins up to 60 yards rushing. And another hole and another broken tackle and another first down. 13 yards on the run for Todman. Now he's at 73 and he does it the hard way. Just following. Nice block by Sherman, the fullback. Nicely done by Zach Hurd, the right guard. And then he just runs through tackles. This kid, he's a strong tackler. Mm -hmm. A runner, rather. He runs through arm tackles, runs behind his pad, like we mentioned earlier. Very patient runner. Big East Offensive Player of the Year, unanimously chosen by the coaches. Robbie Fry is the runner and he has about five and an interesting personal story for Jordan Todman as well. You're looking at Steve and Dana Cruz. They are his legal guardians. Steve Cruz was Jordan Todman's pop water coach when he was eight or nine years old. And Steve's son Justin became Jordan Todman's best friend. Dumped off in the flat. It's the tight end of the fullback rather Sherman chopped down by Jamel Fleming. So Todman stayed close to the Cruz family. He was living in a tough neighborhood. When he got to about eighth grade, his parents got together with the Cruises. They decided that Jordan would move in with the Cruises to go to high school at Dartmouth High School, really with an eye just toward graduating from high school. Then he had a prolific football career there, and it was a big bonus. He became a prospect. And he remains very close with the Cruises. He made the trip out here. Jeremy Beal makes the tackle on Todman. Jordan told us the Cruises really wanted to get here because of the snow in the east. They had to drive from Massachusetts to Baltimore, Maryland to get a flight. Flew from Baltimore to Detroit, Detroit to Phoenix to get here. And I think they were just told by somebody on TV, uh, watching on TV, that they were on TV. <laughs> the phone is ringing. Well, Steve was his little league coach for the new Bedford Bears. Yes. And he followed him all the way up, so he's known him ever since he's eight years old. Play action fake to Todman. Frazier needs to get rid of it and throws it away. It'll be third down. Here's Heather. I talked to the Cruz family before the game and they were all just beaming and bursting with pride. Dana said it's hard to believe that she's here. She said it's surreal. I can't believe that that little eight year old boy that we took under our wing is playing a game this big and maybe playing in the NFL next year. They're living vicariously through Jordan Todman. What a great young man and a great story. Ronnell Lewis is being taken to the locker room hybrid linebacker and defensive end and Heather will find out what's the story there third and seven Frazier's pass deflected and almost intercepted. They'll send the field goal team on because they want to make it a two score game right now they're down by three scores. Well they came with the blitz inside now this gets tipped off the helmet of, of Jeremy Beal. But that was going to be a tough catch to Smith back inside. Jonathan Nelson almost came up with a pick. So here's Dave Taggart, who was the roommate of Jasper Howard last year. 38 yard try. He's one for one tonight from 37. He's a clutch kicker. And they're back within two scores. Five minutes to go, third quarter. Chad Kristen kicks off. Brennan Clay will bring it out, the true freshman. Turn Heather. Guys, I've just gotten confirmation that the Anglin staff is getting ready to transport Ron L. Lewis to the nearest hospital. Now, I've been told that Bonner Australia Hospital is about five minutes away. That's where they normally take any NFL players that get hurt in the stadium, unless it's more significant, and then they'll go to Phoenix. But the ambulance is transporting Ron L. Lewis for further evaluation. Any further update on what they think is wrong with him, Heather? No, they're obviously being very cautious and very quiet. Uh, obviously, they'd like to talk to the family before they give out any other additional information, but they're all doing all the testing that they need to. They're certainly concerned with that neck area. All right, Landry Jones, thank you, Heather, to Kenny Stills for a first down to the 45. You know, piggyback on what Heather was talking about, that's protocol. And they're the medical staff does a fantastic job. And so they get him on the board, and they strap him down. They don't want him to move. I was watching and he he was moving when they were testing him. Those were all good signs, but they're going to follow the protocol like they should and they will do do exactly what they're doing. And the fact that they're taking him apparently to the local hospital not into Phoenix is also good news based on what Heather said. 
You thought they were testing him originally for a stinger when yes. he first got over there because they weren't grabbing his hands. End of the third quarter, Oklahoma, a two touchdown lead at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of the 2011 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. We think we've identified the play on which Ronnell Lewis got hurt. You can see right in the middle. It's a nice block. He stays on, hits him squared up with his face, and then as he starts to go off, he starts to feel it. Now, the good news is he walked off the field. The bad news is that when they tested him, they must have had something or detected something that would merit the protocol that's been taken. Now that is good news that he walked off. Then they started to test him for a stinger. He has had back problems in the past, missed some time in the preseason with a bad back. Well, it's Oklahoma ball as we head to the fourth quarter. They lead by two touchdowns. Ryan Broyles, nice maneuvering after the catch. Out of bounds in the arms of Jerome Jr., but it's a first down to the Yukon 43. You know, he tiny, and if you notice at the end of that hit by Jr., the ball got, came loose again. I talked about four points of pressure. There's DeMarco Murray closing out a prolific career for Oklahoma. And uh, the four points of pressure are your hand, the palm of your hand, your forearm, the crook of your elbow, and in against tight against your body. Those are the four points. On that punt return, he violated three of them. He just had it in his hand. Landry Jones on second and six for Broyles again. And he's working on another big night. That's his 11th catch of the night. 129, adding to his own single season Oklahoma record. He's a junior, but he's setting all of their receiving records. And it might be his last game. He talked with us the other day about the possibility he could well head into the NFL draft. The Marco Murray slides up the middle for seven. Lawrence Wilson made the tackle. Well, Landry Jones has set an Oklahoma bowl game record. 428 yards passing breaks his own record. He had 418 in the Sun Bowl win last year against Stanford in a shootout. He has a chance for the overall school record tonight, which he shares with. Sam Bradford, the most of quarterbacks ever thrown for in any game at Oklahoma is 468. Jones did it this year at Oklahoma State. Sam Bradford threw for 468 once too. And Murray has the first down inside the 10 to the seven yard line. And what a career he's had. You know, with the injuries, a lot of stops and starts in his career, but at the end of the day, he's their all time points leader, he's their all time touchdown maker. He's their all time leading receiver among running backs. 50 touchdowns that's rushing but he has 65 total and that is the all time record when you break records held by Steve Owens and Joe Washington and guys like that you've had a tremendous career. Oh he he fits right up there now this is a different offense than the, the, the names that you mentioned but this is a very effective runner and receiver. There he comes again. Oklahoma's all time leader in all purpose yards and touchdowns and points scored and receiving yards by a running back. And over 6,600 all purpose yards entering tonight. Yeah, and that's the rushing yard number, but in total touchdowns, he's number one. Well, that's the second guy right there, old Simbo, Billy Sims. That was that was one of the great ones. And in had he stayed healthy. He would have been in the in the Hall of Fame in the National Football League and he just tore Oklahoma up won the Heisman as a junior. And they've had some great great runners here at Oklahoma <laughs> not bad 12 catches tonight they have two receivers over 150 yards receiving Broyles and Kenny and there's Broyles again with a catch and it is a touchdown. He's ruled in bounds with Harris Agbor all over him. Yeah, he got the foot down. <laughs> he did. Wow. What that an effort by Broyles and another terrific call by these officials. That foot's down and it's inbound. 
Wow. 247 career catches. Over 3,400 receiving yards and 35 receiving touchdowns. All of those are Oklahoma all-time records, and he could have another year at Oklahoma if he wants to. Very much. Great personality, effervescent, has a big smile. You know, he's just one of those guys you kind of like to be around. Once committed, actually a couple times committed to Oklahoma State. He kept going back and forth during the recruitment. Finally settled on his hometown university. He's from right in Norman. Ryan Broyles. Extra point good by Stevens. Pam Newton, the ninth player in the last 11 years to win the Heisman and then play for the national title. Hasn't been good for the Heisman winners. They're two and six in BCS championship games. Here's Anthony Sherman. Nice run back by their starting fullback out to the 47 yard line. So and the pass is off the hands of Difton and intercepted by Tony Jefferson. And another pick six. Two interception returns for touchdowns for Oklahoma tonight, and both of them hit Connecticut receivers. This one returned 22 yards by Tony Jefferson, the true freshman. Well, it's in his hands, but it's also a good defensive play on the backside. He didn't quite get the number, and then just a nice job of taking it back by Jefferson. His second interception of the season. He's out of Chula Vista, California. In Southern California, San Diego area. Jimmy Stevens makes it 48 to 20. Best way to kick off again. Bounces one down the field. Anthony Sherman again to the 32 yard line. Of course Mike Haywood fired today after being arrested yesterday on a domestic assault charge in Indiana. Jordan Todman runs out near the 50. I want to go back to Jim Harbaugh for one second. You spent a lot of time in the NFL. I would think if Jim Harbaugh wants to stay in college football and if Michigan wants him then that's where he's going to go. I mean, that's his dream job. He grew up there played there. Has great affection for the school and a lot of friends back there, but there are also uh, NFL teams that have expressed interest. Supposedly, his names come up in Carolina, San Francisco, to name just a couple. Well, he has such a good pedigree uh, in coaching. Number one, he comes from a coaching family, and then he's been around the National Football League, played for a long, long time with great success, and then he's made his mark now in college football. So he. He's got the best of all the worlds. I think he'd be a fantastic choice no matter where. He has head coaching experience. He just, and there's something about the head coach. It's more, you know, it's not X's and O's. It's, it's about managing people. It's about managing your staff and getting your team ready and those type of things. And he's demonstrated that. I just think his personality is so fit for college football. I mean, he's a great recruiter. He's so personable. He has that gung ho, uh, gung ho school spirit attitude. Chief Moore the catch they're driving nicely here after a reception by Griffin it's more with a minute and a half to go you know Sean he's got a lot of his his brother and which of course comes from his dad but you know when I watch him he's got a lot of Mike Dick in him mm -hmm. and I I like that I I'm just a I'm a, I'm a big fan of Dicka yeah, I'm a big fan of Jack and John Harbaugh too two of the finest people you'd ever meet not just in coaching in any walk of life. Well, John has his team poised to make a run here. Yeah, three years in a row, he'll have them in the playoffs. They're thinking about the Gatorade bucket on the Oklahoma sideline. Undoubtedly, this has to be a burden lifted. You know, Bob Stoops didn't want to talk about the five straight BCS bowl losses, three of them for national championships. But it's nice to have that thing off the list of things they can cross off, talk about. Ooh. Looked like Griffin might score that elusive touchdown for the Connecticut offense, but he was tripped up at the six yard line. 
They don't want to play the entirety of their last two games of the season without an offensive touchdown. Todman down to the five. Of course, the future is interesting in the Big East with TCU joining uh, the year after next. That will shake things up. That is a talented team, as we saw this afternoon. Beating Wisconsin, that was a good game. Wisconsin, of course, tried to go for the two point conversion, did not get it, did not get the onside kick, but. Frazier throws, and it's incomplete, intended for Kashif Moore. Yep, they're ready for the. The old stalking bucket. Gatorade bucket. <laughs> always, here's the key in college football always get two departing seniors to dump it on your coach. Never use an underclassman. If you're an underclassman and he don't like the cold, you ain't playing <laughs> next year. <laughs> Jordan Tobin didn't quite get to the end zone. We said it's hard to think of him as 50 years old. I didn't realize we got ready for this game that they've had a lot of young coaches. Bob Wilkinson, Fairbanks, Switzer, all were 35 or younger when they became the head coach at Oklahoma. Todman stopped on fourth and goal. So they cannot get that elusive touchdown. And they can get the not so elusive coach with the Gatorade bucket. He'll take it. They've waited a long time for that in the BCS game. Yeah, that was smart. See, Mensick's a senior. He dumped it on him. He's a Mensick candidate. He's a Mensick guy. That's right. Because <laughs> they won a bowl game last year, but the Sun Bowl, but it's their first BCS bowl win since 2003. Five straight losses since that Rose Bowl win. And for Oklahoma, 26 bowl wins now in 44 bowl appearances. And a nice bounce back season. And meanwhile, a huge step for the Connecticut program. Only fully up to the 85 scholarships you're allowed in FBS football in 2002. And in a BCS bowl game. Jones takes an E. And Oklahoma will finish the season at 12 and 2. And Connecticut, 8 and 5. Those two have known each other a long time when they were assistant coaches. Stoops at Kansas State, Edsel at Boston College. They used to recruit South Florida. Ran into each other a lot, got to know each other. And Bob is with Heather. Coach, congratulations on the win. At what point did you know this would be a special night? <laughs> when we took a knee at the end, I don't ever. When you're out there coaching, you don't. You know, you're playing to the end, and um, you know, it's, kids did a heck of a job. Players deserve the credit, and I'm proud of them. Randy's got a great team at Connecticut, so we had, we had a good game. We had some. They had some big plays with the interception, uh, uh, you know, and then the uh, kickoff return against us. I hung around, but our guys kept playing well. How was your defense able to hold UConn's offense without an offensive touchdown this entire game? They played really well, really solid. Um, you know, they had their plays, which they're going to, but thought we played the run game, you know, really well. They worked us a couple of the drives, but overall, we, that's where it started. And then, you know, we got some big turnovers and got pressure to them. Coach, this is your first BCS Bowl win in six tries. How much is there a feeling of relief and redemption right now? Uh, that's not a, you know, it's, I don't I don't have all that like everyone else wants to talk about it. in the end as I as I put it before I said if you want to be technical about it we've lost three national championships and our last two BCS Bowls so I look at it that way but in the end hey uh, it's good to win uh, these guys did a great job so it was yeah uh, it's it's fun how impressed were you by your big three on offense tonight you know those guys are great players Landry had a huge game Ryan Broyles just does some of the most amazing things catching the football and DeMarco's just always so steady tough physical um, proud of all of them coach go enjoy the win congrats right, you yeah. have appreciate it. And welcome back to University of Phoenix Stadium where Oklahoma has defeated Connecticut in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl let's head down to the field to John Saunders for the Fiesta Bowl awards ceremony John Sean thanks a lot first of all our congratulations to the University of Connecticut on a fine season 
But our best congratulations to Oklahoma and the Sooners for winning the Fiesta Bowl. Coach Bob Stoops is trying to get his captains up here, but we're going to try and do that in a moment. But first of all, joining me to present the awards are Tostitos Vice President, Mr. Justin Lambeth, Director of Tostitos, Ms. Janelle Hottinger, and Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Chairman, Mr. Dwayne Woods. Dwayne, will you make the first presentation? Thank you. Yes, my great honor on behalf of our 3,000 volunteers to present the 40th annual Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Game Trophy to head coach Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma Sooners. Congratulations, Thank you. coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bob, we talked to coaches before the game and some of the players, and, and they were so intense. They felt that the last couple of times you were here, you didn't have the knockout punch, and so you went to Sugar Ray Leonard and Muhammad Ali. <laughs> yeah, we we wanted to come in with a fighter's mentality. We've we've been watching some some uh, some good boxers through the years, and and so uh, they they did a good job fighting here tonight. It was interesting because this was typical Bob Stoops football: a great offense and a dominating defense. Well, I was proud of the players. They sure deserve the credit. Uh, you know, both sides of the ball really did play well all night. Offense moved it, run and pass, and defense didn't give up a touchdown the entire night. It's pretty special. The other thing that people like to make a lot of is the fact that, that you guys lost five of these in a row, but the way I look at it, to lose them, you got to be in them, right? <laughs> They're not easy to get to. Just look around the country, and I've always had an appreciation for that. I realize that, and uh, so anyway, I'm proud of these players for being able to bring this trophy home. Well, congratulations to you once again on a fine season. Appreciate it. Congratulations to Landry Jones, Bob Stoops, and the Oklahoma Sooners. Right now, back to Sean McDonough. All right, John, thank you.